Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Email World. The countdown is on, seven days until Christmas. I was away last week, but I've had fun catching up. The first story is about Inks Mail and the integration they have with BeMe. By all accounts, Inks Mail is the first email marketing provider worldwide to use BeMe. So pretty much what, what is BeMe? It allows senders to use a, an image of their logo so recipients can actually see before they open the email that it's in fact from them. And it's, it's all to do with trusted senders. This has been talked about for quite some time. And now it's good to see Inks Mail has integrated this. Who's next up? What are the next developments for that? I'll put a link to a video explaining exactly how BeMe works in the description below. Next topic, Fade Secure and Return Path strengthen their partnership. What exactly does that mean? They're two massive players in the industry. This integration together, this partnership could help them on many levels. It will be interesting to see how that progresses moving forwards. They don't give too much of a game away, but rightly so, we're, we're dealing with combating spam. The next point is all about Alexa and AI in email marketing. Last week, it came, came about that, in fact, Alexa can now read emails, delete them, read the subject line, respond, reply to the emails. What will this mean for email marketing? It's a great point. If people are doing this in mass, then we'll have to likely adapt. How would we adapt? Well, that's something that we'll, that's another challenge we'll have to look at. Perhaps following up from this, we'll see Google Echo and they'll come out with something similar. Um, but this is definitely an approach we have to look at and see if we need to adapt our emails too. Subject line of the week. This came in 14th of December by Jess Vice. A deal so good you'll soil yourself. That subject line is pretty good. It comes from Succulent Studios. And what are they? I think they sell little cactuses. I'll just put their uh, website on the screen for the benefit of all of us. Thanks, Jess, for sending that in. I really appreciate stuff like that. The next point, priest stuff like that. On the subject of subject lines, here's another great article of the top 100 subject lines for your Christmas ca email campaigns. This was by E. Sputnik. Here we've got a list of over 100 subject lines. Five key takeaways. Spread the holiday cheer. Merry Christmas. Two, offer solutions to readers' problems. I like this one. The third one, create urgency. Four, sprinkle your subject line with emojis. Always put emojis in there. Why not? Five, use inclusive holiday greetings. Happy holidays. And a sixth one I'll throw in there for free. Use lyrics from a song. Well, I think Habitat have done that. Anyway, great article. Check it out. Next article, target marketing. Four email metrics that you should have a look at during the holiday season in regards to deliverability. My favourite topic. First one, inbox placement. Where are your emails delivering? If, if they're not going to the inbox, where are they going? Why? If you need any assistance, I'm your man. Two, complaint rates. You can handle that in your data collection process. Are there going to be a massive spike of complaints? If so, why? Are you sending too many emails too soon? Should they be in your mailing list? Should you make it easy for them to opt out or easier? These are all the things that spring to mind. Unknown users and spam traps. How, again, going back to the quality of your data. Why are you having unknown bounces? Are you addressing an old list for Christmas time? Mr. Spam Go traps. Can you, can you analyze your data before you send the campaigns? Subscriber engagement. Do people actually want to receive your emails? Open, clicking, deleting, marking as spam. You name it. Check out the article. That's a good one. Talking about inbox placement rate, I've stumbled upon this tool, gmas.co. Has anyone actually seen it or used it? Quite interesting, a big seed list of 17 addresses for different aged e Gmail accounts by looks of things. You can send a test and you can see where you placed in the folder. Now I think it could be useful, but if we're looking at user engagement rates, etc., are these um, inboxing, oh, inboxes being monitored? Again, focused on inbox placement and Gmail specifically. I'll leave the link in the description. Any feedback there, let me know. Next topic, this channel. First and foremost, thanks for all your support. You can also like this video and subscribe. 
But aside from that, not really interested that you do that. Just don't unsubscribe. But I'm thinking about changing the format. Someone's mentioned adding a blog post. I think that's quite good. But it, again, it's more time consuming. Someone else mentioned every other week, provide a solution to an email marketing problem. I'm open for that. If you'd like to suggest me anything that I could solve, then I'll do that. Otherwise, I can think about something to do. Seeing as you've got loads of spare time lately, you've got 35 tools to enhance your email marketing campaigns from emailmonks.com. Now, I'm not even going to begin to go through this, but in fact, it's very resourceful. It gives you lots of examples, ESPs, analytical tools, deliverability tools, blacklisting tools, building your tools, analysis tools. You've got the lot here, and that's by Isaac Crook. Thanks for that. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Email World Weekly. Enjoy your time off. See you next week. Boy,